everybody, it's me, Alex, once again, and today we're going to be doing another review, and this one will be on Panzer Dragoon Remake. So, why don't we just start with a synopsis of the story really quick? Well, really quick is subjective, but we're just going to kind of go over it really quick, and then we're going to talk about the gameplay and all that stuff. So, the Panzer Dragoon series takes place in a post-apocalyptic planet, where the people compete for land, resources, and the technology of the ancients. The Ancients is a generic name given to the people that once controlled a world-spanning, hyper-advanced civilization thousands of years before the start of the Panzer Dragoon series of games. The Ancients were able to create monsters either for war use or practical uses. These creatures survived the downfall of the Ancients and are one of the main enemies in the series. A mysterious cataclysm I can't speak today, guys. Hinted as, as, as a terrible war during the course of the series would spell the downfall of this civilization and nearly destroy the world, leaving the survivors to eke out a bleak existence among the blasted remains in the ensuing millennia. Eventually, the ancients and their works would gain a sort of godlike respect and a horrific regard among some people as they pass into legend. The remnants of these technologies are used in the development of much of humanity's own machinery, weaponry, and vehicles, such as the unusual floating ships, which are a staple of the series. A faction called the Empire have collected and used weapons from the ancient age to gain dominance of the world and, well, continent, but it's, it's pretty much the whole world. So the gameplay of Panzer Dragoon is an on-rail shooter. Now, normally, I'm not a big fan of these games, but this gives it a unique twist that makes it stick out. I have played Star Fox, and the straight linear level design isn't all that engaging to me. But in Panther Dragoon, you can turn the camera into four positions. You can use the face buttons or the shoulder buttons to change the view. I recommend the shoulder buttons. In this, you also have an independent shooting uh, button, pretty much like Star Fox, and a lock-on system. I don't remember Star Fox's lock-on system, forgive me if I don't remember. Uh, so it has a lock-on system with the dragon. Both prove to be great, but the gun can do more damage per second if you have Thunder Thumbs. So just be prepared for Carpal Tunnel. Now I haven't talked much about the levels themselves, so what you've been seeing is Episode 1. This isn't a long game, so these levels stick out very well. And the area around you is, um, in the first level, is ruined, sunk in by the ocean. Uh, in the original, this looks pretty good, but in the remake, especially on PC, it looks damn amazing. This is one of the few levels that goes on a linear course. Unlike Star Fox, you have turns and bends, though before you know it, you're fighting the first boss. You can go down relatively easy, just utilize your gun when needed, and just mash it to win. You get a result screen, too. And it's a very, very arcade design where you get credits. You can get one or maybe three. It all depends on your skill in the game. Now, episode two brings us to a desert. It has my worst fears. Giant worm creatures. They appear out of the sand. Just like, just, just so much nope. And you have to shoot their skin off. And it's disgusting. And I hate them. So, yeah, no, I didn't like this part whatsoever. But graphically, it looks great in the desert. I didn't think they could make a desert look that good, to be honest. Especially with like this being one of the probably lower-budgeted games in, this, in any of Sega's remakes. Uh, so anyway, we continue on into a cave. And this is, I believe, the only time you come to a stop to take out enemies. But here you'll start to get the hang of the change in camera since you're forced to use it. We get out, we see some more worms, and then after that, a sandstorm picks up and you fight the prototype dragon from the opening intro. You kick its arse, and it flees for now. And therefore, time to follow it to the tower. Episode 3. Now we find ourselves in a misty mountainous region, and we go ahead and wipe out some imperial ships and monsters... Then we reach the ground level and go in a loop and destroy all the machinery, which is one of my favorite parts in any of these levels. Not sure why, I just find it very cool. So after blowing up everything in there, the boss shows himself. He will jump in front of you and behind you multiple times. Just hold out until he shows his weak point, then just wipe him out. Wipe him out and the dragon and the rider will make their way into a tunnel system, which is much more than it looks on the outside. Now, in episode 4, you're immediately flying full speed through 
very claustrophobic tunnels. You can take many turns. You can go up, down, to get to different levels. It's truly an adrenaline rush compared to the previous episodes. This is where things start to get hard, in my opinion. Because once you get to the strange red robot not doing anything, he can beat you down hard if you took too much damage earlier. Which I guarantee you, you will be hit. Because dodging these things in this stage requires a godlike timing ability, pretty much ultra instinct levels of prediction. Give the robot a beating and you'll find yourself outside again. Now we're on to episode 5. So back outside, you find yourself in a beautiful forest that really benefits from the remake because this is the best looking stage in the game. And in terms of difficulty, it's not too bad. In fact, I'd say the stage is harder than the boss. I mean, you will probably die in your first try, but it's a pretty smooth ride all the way through. Uh, again, though, the boss is an absolute joke. It barely attacks. There is like a pre-boss, but it doesn't have a health bar, so I guess you can count that as a boss. But when you get to the main boss with the health bar, it's such a joke. You just destroyed these little bits and pieces here, and then boom, it's done. It just feels like the difficulty scaling felt weird here. So, yeah, that's kind of odd. So now we move on to episode 6. So this is the final proper stage, and it's the most hectic. It's storming out a bit. The water is rushing like crazy. The enemies are everywhere, and you're constantly following the prototype dragon from episode 2. And you're getting closer to the tower, and it's trying to reach. And through this, you go through multiple bends, making it the most dynamic stage in the game. And what a way to end the game with a very intense stage, which I did have some trouble with. So be on your guard. Episode 7. Now, I did say Episode 6 was the last stage, but this is the final boss. Not much to say, other than, again, you can only, like play this on normal mode or higher um, if you don't uh, the game again as episode 6 but this guy is kind of hard but I don't know it just with the old good old shooter and the dragon lasers you'll find yourself taking him down pretty easily and you gotta make sure you freaking kill him before he fires that green laser at the end I believe that's a one hit kill I, I don't know so you kill the dragon he blows up. You destroy the tower. Well, actually, no. You go into the tower. My bad. And for some reason, the dragon puts you in a protective shield away from it. It goes flying in down the tunnel. And then the whole place just blows up. And we assume the dragon died because we only see the rider make it out alive. But you do see dragon steps on the ground. So it is still alive somewhere. So there you have it. Panzer Dragoon Remake. It's a more than worthy remake for a classic. I hear at launch it wasn't as good, but this is post-patch, so it works for me anyway perfectly. Now, there's one thing that you can get after beating normal mode, and it's pretty cool. It's Pandora's Box. It can give you a stage select, auto-fire, god mode, no rider on the dragon, and easy bosses. Again, a great reward for making it through. And this will definitely give you more replay value if you ever decide to revisit this. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about this. I hope you enjoyed this review. And thank you to the developers of this game who made this possible. Because this is a series that needs more recognition. And I really cannot wait for Sabai. And then maybe Panzer Dragoon Saga, huh? So anyway, I will see you guys next time. Farewell.